Don't click under the influence. Cheers, Internet, and welcome one and all. I'd like to introduce our first full session of Let's Drink to Gaming Tabletop. As some of you may know from Borderlands coverage, I am very fond of whiskey. For this session, we have a very special guest coming to us all the way from Washington, D.C. It's the man who got me into whiskey in the first place, Lenny. Hello, Internet. I'm Lenny. I'm a friend of Trent's from a long time ago, and I went to the same university as the Build Environment crew. I actually initiated Trent into the mysteries of good whiskey, so any terrible mistakes he's made because of that is, well, really going to be laid at my feet. Uh, if he makes any pretentious statements, you might have heard him talk about it during the show. That's my fault. Him drinking feckin' whiskey, that's not my fault. So, uh, when he invited me on, I was quick to jump aboard, so... My hobbies include scotch, smack talk, and sudden but inevitable betrayals, so uh, there's going to be quite a few of that in there. Joining us as well, we have another experienced whiskey drinker who I hope you all know. He gave this show a home, and he helped me breathe life back into life's copious empty bottles around here. It's Phil, who runs all the shows on Build Environment. All right, I'm Phil. I uh, I write the Build Environment blog, and I started and maintained the Build Environment channel YouTube page that we're on this very day. And I'm gonna be playing some games with uh, with Trent on Tabletop Edition. Of Let's get together. Along with Phil, often comes our favorite mixologist and another discerning and experienced palate. Let's welcome Rachel. Hi, I'm Rachel. I do the art for most of the site on Let's Drinking to Whatever. Um, Let's Drink to Gaming, Let's Drink to Tabletop. I'm also a little bit of an amateur mixologist, so I'm good at getting people drunk. We'd also like to welcome a very old friend of mine. In the old days, we used to grab a beer and sit down and play some video games. Please welcome Billy. <laughs> Last and certainly not least, I've known this guy for as long as I can remember. He introduced me to Duke Nukem and used to lose games of chess with me side by side against my father. I'd like to introduce my cousin, Derek. Hey everyone, my name is Derek. You probably don't recognize me. This is my first time ever appearing on the Build Environment, or anything for that matter. Anyways, I am Trent's cousin, and I just came up to have a couple drinks, play some games, have a good time, and I'm just happy to be here. Okay, so we've introduced our tasters and our gamers. I'd like to now run through our lineup of whiskeys. We're going to do this pretty quickly, and we'll go through them a little bit more in depth as we drink and play. So, we have a range going from some of my favorite Irishes, some Scotches, bourbons, and even some Japanese whiskeys. So let's go through them. First up, we have the Rembrandt 12. Lovely Irish whiskey, my personal favorite. The Rembrandt 15, another Irish whiskey. The Rembrandt 12 cask strain. Then we have the Conmara blended. It's a peated Irish. The Conmara 12 beer. Now we're into scotches with the Glenfiddich 15 and the Dalwini 15, followed up by some Japanese whiskeys, the Yamazaki 12 and the Nika 12. And following it all up with the Seagram's VO. Through the magic of editing, we can bring you Angel's Envy. We also bring you the Dalmore 15 and some Jameson 12. Hope you guys find something to sip along with and enjoy. So, we've got our people, we've got our whiskey, let's talk about the games. What are you going to play when you're going to taste some whiskey? We chose Flux, the game where everything shifts out from underneath. As we taste, the game will change. And, because we have such a large spread, we've chosen five different versions of Flux. We have Flux 4.0, Pirate Flux, Star Flux, Zombie Flux, Cthulhu Flux. Flux 4.0, your basic Flux with your yellow ribbon new rule cards. Your pink ribbon goal cards. Your blue ribbon action cards. And your green ribbon keeper cards. And of course, we can't forget. 
the Black Ribbon Creeper cards. Creepers are where this game has really gone. Everything has gotten more complex with adding them, and they've really gone throughout these five to explore what they can do with different creepers. In Flux 4.0, they don't do a whole lot. We get to see some basic interaction. Generally, creepers prevent you from winning, but occasionally they can make you win. Usually, if they make you win, they're a harder goal to accomplish. Then you also have Pirate Flux. Now, Pirate Flux really amps up the interaction of the cards. What Pirate Flux will do is, let's say you have Scurvy. How do you secure Scurvy? Well, have some oranges, have some limes. Citrus secures Scurvy. Pirate Flux starts to define how players have to act outside of the game. The Captain's Hat makes people have to call you Captain while you play. And who doesn't want to be called a Captain? So that can be a lot. Moving forward, we have Star Flux. Star Flux introduces a new card. The Surprise card. Yeah, surprise! Like, You've just activated my trap card! And surprise cards will usually focus on a specific target type of card. For example, some surprise cards will have a blue ribbon on it. That means that this surprise card is intended for use on actions. While others will have a green ribbon. The green ribbon wants usually say something about stealing keepers. For example, out of your turn you may steal a keeper immediately after someone else plays it, thus preventing them from winning. But in your turn, you can steal any keeper on the board. Both are very powerful abilities. Starflux is also a science fiction theme flux. What you'll find in there is a lot of science fiction references, but no actual science fiction licensed characters. For example, the expendable crewman is wearing a red shirt. And the engineer is a red haired woman. Now these are all very recognizable characters, but they're not technically the same as the ones you saw on your show. Moving forward, let's talk about zombie flux. This one's one of the more complex and more interesting ones. In this one, the creepers are the focus, because zombies are obviously going to be creepers. But they can be your win condition. So you may have to collect an array of different types of zombies and a baseball bat to form a zombie baseball team. Or you may have to arrange it so that all of your opponents have zombies and you don't, so that you can take the last car out of town and save yourself. Zombie Flux introduces to us ungoals. Ungoals are a negative win condition. Everybody at the table loses. That means the deck wins. The deck is not you. You want you to win. You don't want the guy next to you to win, but you really don't want the deck to win. So you're going to take those ungoals very personally. You want to try to stomp those out as quickly as you can, but the deck is just going to keep throwing them your way. And Cthulhu Flux takes that ungoal and amps it up by adding Doom Counters. Many of the cards in Cthulhu Flux have Doom Counters. Doom Counters look like this. Cthulhu has three of them. They look like little hourglasses. Now there's also Anti-Doom Counters, which are sideways hourglasses. We'll get a little bit more into the rules of those as we get into our Cthulhu Flux playthroughs. But all you need to know for now is that Doom Counters could work for you, or it could work against you. Some of you may find that statement a little bit worthless, but to those who have played Flux, you'll understand that anything can work for you, and anything can work against you. So, that's it for our five games. Again, Cthulhu Flux, Zombie Flux, Star Flux, Pirate Flux, and Flux 4.0. We obviously have a lot of whiskey in front of us. We might not reach it all. We might. We're going to follow up with you at the end of the next couple weeks, after the session is over, and review what we didn't get to try, and hopefully we'll get to see it in a future episode.
Don't worry, if nothing else, you can tune into Borderlands and see me drink it. Well, not see me, but hear it. Cheers, Internet! Well, like, what's a what's one flavor that really comes up for you? There isn't really. Kind of, yeah. You know what? Whiskey. <laughs>